What derivative? The second derivative. Can I just get to the second derivative and bypass the rest of the stuff before it? No. I have to do the first derivative and then do the second derivative. We did the first derivative yesterday, right? We did. Go. Okay. So we're going to take the derivative. So we have x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals 16. The derivative of x to the 4 is 4x cubed because power rule. The derivative of uh, y to the 4 is 4y cubed. And then I have to follow behind with y prime. Now the reason why I'm using y prime and not dy over dx is because they asked me to find y double prime. They did not ask me to find d2x over dy squared, which is how they write, leave me second notation. So I'm just going to use y primes because they asked for y primes. You have to do it in the format that they asked you for. Okay? So y prime just represents dy over dx. It's the same thing. One's in one notation, one's in another notation. And then we can't forget that the derivative of 16 is 0, not 16. Okay? So once again, we need to do the y primes by itself. So we're going to subtract 4x cubed from both sides. And then we get y, uh, 4y cubed times y prime equals negative 4x cubed. I love how you guys battle what another person said the whole time. It's, it's legit. Okay. See? And then we get y prime equals, take the fours out and we're left with negative x cubed over y cubed. And that's what we would have done yesterday. Now, so dy over dx is the same as y prime. Eric, just do this. I'm sure you'll get this. That's what happened yesterday. Okay. It'll 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 make sense. This is how we do it. Ebb and flow. So this is all we did yesterday. The only difference between right now and yesterday is I used a y prime instead of dy over dx because one is Leibniz notation and one is the other notation. They mean the same thing. But this one asks for y double prime. Okay. So now I have y prime equals negative x cubed over y cubed. How, for art thou, am I going to do the derivative of that? Quotient rule. Quotient rule. Because it's division. True that, sister. So, so we have f and we have g. f prime is negative 3x squared. g prime is 3y squared y prime. 3y squared y prime. We agree? No. All right. So we are going to do quotient rule, which is gf prime minus fg prime all over g squared. I just made that talk. You should like it. Okay. So... What's the derivative of y prime? Y double, y double prime. So, we're going to get g. You got your g, you got your g. Give me enough time. F prime, you got your f prime. Minus sign. Don't put a plus. If you're me, they do it 98% of the time. It's really an addiction. Okay, minus sign. Uh, so, g f prime minus f. G prime all over G squared. Now I'm going to simplify that up a little bit. So I'm going to get Y double prime equals negative 3X squared Y cubed. This is multiplication. I can write it in any order I want. Minus and minus. So I'm going to go plus. 3x cubed y squared y prime over y to the 6. Now, great answer won't be this. Because this is the only one where when I find the second derivative, I need the first derivative to fix it. 
Have you ever found a second derivative yet and had the first derivative sitting in it? Like a y prime sitting there? No. You have found the second derivative and it just had all the jazz. So you have to remember with implicit differentiation that we have the answer to this bad boy, even though it looks like a y and one. It's y and prime. We have an answer to this bad boy. What is it? So can I not just take this y prime and be like, get out of my life? And take this one and be like, yes, I like you, and put you in there. Yeah? Yeah, for real. Okay, so we have y double prime equals negative 3x squared y cubed plus 3x cubed y squared, and then a negative x cubed over y cubed over y to the 6. That cancels off. Yeah. Okay, so what am I going to get? I'm going to get y double prime equals negative 3x squared y cubed minus 3x to the 6 over y over y to the 6. Also, a really good answer won't be there. What do I have in my numerator? It starts with an F, rhymes with raction the F word of mathematics, fraction. Uh, I have a fraction. Am I allowed to have a fraction in the numerator? No. Nada. How do I get rid of a fraction? If it was divided by 2, I take out a half. If it's dividing by 3, I take out a third. If it was dividing by 10, I take out a tenth. If it's dividing by 1, I take out a... I mean, if it's dividing by y, I take out a 1 over y. Right? So I'm going to get y double prime equals 1 over y, GCF outside. When I take a 1 over y out of negative 3x squared y cubed, what am I actually left with? Dividing by y is the same as what? Sorry, dividing by 1 over y is the same as multiplying by y. So I'm going to get negative 3x squared y to the 4. And then this y just comes out. Negative 3x6. The y's gone. And then I have a y to the 6 on the bottom. And where can this y go? Down yonder. So I'm going to get y to the prime equals negative 3x squared y4 minus 3x6 over y to the 7. Sometimes they have weird answers where they take a 3 and an x squared out and leave it just sitting in the numerator for fun. If I take this first term, which is negative 3x squared y cubed, and I GCF out a 1 over y, that means I'm dividing by 1 over y, which is actually the same as multiplying by y over 1, which is why it gets me negative 3x squared y to the 4. Okay. Sorry, I just left it hanging there. Here, boom, go. That's your homework, and it's due.